Hey everyone, today we're going to look at chemical reactions. Now a lot of people are scared by chemical reactions, but don't worry, this lesson is not as bad as you expected. Um, we'll just cover a couple of uh, simple concepts. And I know you don't believe me, simple, but we'll make it as simple as possible. Okay, so there are a lot of learning objectives for chemical reactions in the two versions of T's. Um, as you can see, there is some new content, but some of them are really just uh, a new wording for the old content. The most important ones are highlighted in red. First, explain the role of valence electrons in chemical reactivity. And we already covered this, right? In uh, a previous lesson, we talked about valence electrons and how is that related to chemical uh, properties of elements. So if you have eight electrons in the valence shell, then you're stable, right? You are not very reactive. But if you don't have eight, if you have any number from one to seven, then you want to react with other atoms, right? And then get to that number eight in the valence shell. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. And it should be covered uh, by that previous lesson. So you can just skip this learning objective and then move on to the next one. Define covalent ionic bonds. I have a lesson for T6 that covers uh, this to topic pretty well. So I would recommend that you watch that to get the basics. Now, this is a new objective, but don't worry, it's, it was covered by six. So we just need to kind of do a little recap, uh, refresh your memory, and that's it. Very easy. The next one, balanced chemical reactions. We have already done this for T6. So again, this is nothing very new that you need to learn from the very start. Um, it's something that you already know, you have already practiced probably. So I will put the link to that video in the description box below the video and hopefully um, you can just watch that and then learn how to balance chemical reactions. And then the last one, um, which we will go over today, this is about the mole concept in terms of quantities in chemical reactions. This is related to balancing chemical reactions. So with this particular learning objective, I think it will help you a lot when you balance chemical reactions. So I think it's a very good topic to study. I would recommend that maybe finish today's video and learn about the uh, mold concept. And then you can check out the T6 video for balancing chemical reactions. Okay, so it, it's not really that bad, right? A lot of stuff you have already known. So we'll just cover a couple of new things today. First, uh, it's just a refresh your memory for identifying reactants and products in chemical reactions. So this is very easy. Reactants are what goes into a chemical reaction. So the all the chemicals that are on the left side of the arrow, now the arrow indicates the direction for the chemical reaction. So uh, normally the arrow points to the right. So everything on the left is what you start with. And those chemicals are reactants. And everything on the right side are products, right? That's what comes out of the chemical reaction. So in this case, methane reacts with the oxygen. Those are reactants. And that chemical reaction generates carbon dioxide and water. So these two are products, right? The end products of the chemical reaction. So that's pretty much it. Reactants, reaction sign, and products. OK, now uh, let's do a little quick practice. I, I didn't put the timer here. I'll just count to 20 seconds. So everything on the left is the reactants, right? So these are reactants. And then everything on the right, those are products. Okay. Now you may wonder what S, G, A, Q mean. So S just refers to solid. So uh, magnesium, that's the metal in solid form. And then G, you can probably guess. Right, so that's a gas form. So oxygen is in gas. And then AQ, that's for aqueous form. So these are aqueous or in liquid form. 
Okay, now how about the Mo concept in terms of quantities in chemical reactions? Now, a lot of times we use Mo as a measure of quantity. A lot of times you won't see gram or kilogram, milligram. So everything is in Mo. And it's often spelled as M-O-L. So that's a standard scientific unit in chemistry for measuring large quantities of atoms, molecules, or other particles. Now, remember, in one mole of any substance, there are supposed to be this many particles or molecules in one mole. So I know that this is a very big number, but molecules are very small, right? So even though that's a big number, um, the substance might still uh, come in small quantity. It might not be very heavy. In this chemical reaction, magnesium reacts with oxygen and generates magnesium oxide. There are coefficients for this chemical reaction. So what are the coefficients? So the number that's before a chemical, that's the coefficient. So for example, two, that's the coefficient for magnesium. And for oxygen, if nothing is written out, that means the coefficient is a one. It's just a, a, an unsp unspoken rule. And over here, the coefficient is 2. Okay? Now, we have coefficients so that the chemical reaction is balanced. If you start with one oxygen mo molecule that has two oxygen atoms, right, then you will end up with two oxygen atoms. Okay? So that's what uh, you know, it, coefficients are for. Now, the coefficients represent moles represents how many moles of a particular um, substance will go into the chemical reaction or is generated in the chemical reaction. So in this particular chemical reaction, we put in two moles of magnesium, one mole oxygen, they react, and they produce two moles of uh, magnesium oxide. So that's pretty much it. Now, I have a question. In, I know there's a lot of text there, but just bear it with me. Uh, the answer is at the very bottom, but I would suggest you trying to figure out this on your own before looking at the answer. So how do we translate moles to something that we can actually measure, right? Because moles, th that unit tells you how many molecules are in a certain amount of the substance, but it doesn't really help much, right? We can't really measure how many molecules there are. So we have to trans translate that to something we could measure. Normally, we can measure the actual weight, right? Like in gram, in milligram, in kilogram. So we have this rule. One mole of a particular element weighs the atomic mass measured in grams. So for example, we know the atomic mass of oxygen is 16, right? So one mole of oxygen atoms would weigh 16 grams. That's pretty easy, right? You just uh, figure out the atomic weight for an element and then just add gram to it. And that's how much one mole of that particular atom would weigh. That's it. Now that's oxygen atom, right? One oxygen atom. Now, how about we look at oxygen gas? Now, oxygen gas has two oxygen atoms, right? So what would be the actual weight for one mole of oxygen gas? Now, it has two oxygen atoms in that molecule, right? So the atomic weight for oxygen gas should be 16 times 2, which is 32. That's a chemical formula for oxygen gas. There are two oxygen atoms. So the total atomic weight for oxygen gas is the weight of two oxygen atoms, right, which is 32. So one mole of oxygen gas is going to be 32 grams. That's it. Okay, how about water, H2O? So each hydrogen weighs one, and we have two hydrogen atoms, so one times two, and oxygen is 16, right? So the total atomic mass for water is 18. So one mole of water would weigh how much? Right, 18 grams. Okay, not bad, right? As long as you can figure out the atomic mass, 
uh, from the periodic table, right? And then uh, just kind of add everything up to make that molecule. And then that's the weight. That's the actual weight per mole. All right, how about um, this exercise question? So I'll give you about 10 seconds. Okay, if you look at the periodic table, the atomic mass for this element, magnesium, is 24. So one mole would just be 24 grams. The atomic mass of magnesium oxide is going to be what the atomic weight for magnesium, which is 24, plus the atomic weight for oxygen atom, which is 16, so that total is 40. So one mole of magnesium oxide is going to weigh 40 grams. And that's it. Now, I do have a note here. The atomic mass is not the same as the atomic number. Okay. So when you look at the periodic table, do not use the atomic number. Use the atomic mass. 